What is up, players? It's Warboss Tay up in this mug. Welcome to part one of a two-part series where I'm going to be painting this Bretonian Bowman to, um, I guess, match up with the artwork that I've seen recently. I'm not sure if it's for the Old World game or for Total War, but I saw a Bretonian Bowman artwork that I thought, oh, that looks just like the miniatures. I'm going to paint one up. And uh, it's also good because it's not too stressful. This is not, you know, a quality model like Lionel Johnson, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. I can just crank out a tutorial really quick and also get my skills back up to level. If you hear me trying not to cough, then uh, I apologize for that. I'm getting over a bad cold. So this tutorial is hopefully going to keep you company while you're working on whatever you're painting. And I also hope to use it for people who are interested in Bretonia but have never collected the miniatures or for new painters. This is really geared towards building a, a nice looking army, I guess, that uh, does not require that many paints. All I basically did was base coats and shades. And that's why you can still see the shades are still drying. This guy looks pretty glossy because I, I just applied the base coats and finished filming this video before I'm doing this introduction now. And uh, I think he looks like he's coming along really nicely. So here are the paints that I used on this miniature in no particular order. Raikland Flesh Shade, Known Oil, Agrax Earth Shade, for the hood Mephiston Red, and... McCraig blue for the skirt, Castellan green, Morn Fang brown for all of the uh, straps and wrappings, Cadian flesh tone for his face and his hands, Xandri dust for his bow, Steel Legion drab for the rope around his waist, Rhinox hide for his shoes. <clears throat> and Rackarth Flesh for his shirt. All right, I hope you guys enjoy it. Get some of your own models out to paint. You don't have to have one of these or be painting a Bretonian model to follow this video. If you want to just work on whatever you're painting and want to have somebody painting with you, then uh, stick, stick around and paint with me. Let's, ha let's hang out for a little bit. All right, here we go. Oh, and uh, just uh, one more thing. I did prime the model all in black. I don't usually do that anymore, but I do have a black primer that I used for this particular model. I think I primed him a couple years ago. Forgot all about him, so I uh, primed him in black, and I'm not sure if I'm going to show the actual picture of the miniature, that uh, the artwork that I found, because I don't want I don't want to get hit with a copyright strike or anything. So maybe I'll put the picture of this miniature into the Discord and uh, maybe I'll make a post with that picture on it so you could see and compare. I think I did a pretty good job of matching it up. If you want to see how it, he looks with all of his highlights and uh, I'm even going to do a little bit of freehand on his metal there and there at the waist, then stay tuned for part two because that's where I'm going to do that. All of this video is going to be just for bringing him up to this level. Hey, thanks for watching everybody. Hope you're having a great day and uh, we'll see you as we continue, let's go. So the first color we're going to paint on our model here is Castellan Green. And that is going to go right on his pretty little skirt. If you look at the artwork, it's a interesting color of this drab green. It's very ugly. And it looks like it might have just been... Uh, just a tablecloth or something that he just uh, threw on because it's so cold. I don't imagine that he actually went and got himself a, a skirt. I don't know, he might have. What, what do I know? It's Bretonia. It's a fantasy world. So the great thing about this, and the reason why I'm starting with it, if you're a new painter or if you're out of practice, such as I am, it's a great wide surface area. There's no real big mistakes that you can make. And anyway, these are just throwaway archers anyway. So it's not like you're painting, you know, Lionel Johnson and you make a mistake. It's like at the end of the world. Okay, the next color we're going to use 
is going to be Morn Fang Brown, which is going to be all of the belts as well as the bindings on the arms and legs. The reason we do this is because there are four areas where you can see these bindings. One, two, three, and four. We're also going to use these to paint the shoe because we want to cut as many steps out of this process as possible. The less steps you have to do to get to a fully painted miniature, then the faster it's going to get that miniature painted up. And as you can see for you new painters and for those of you who haven't been painting in a while, I try to get the paint only onto the very tip of the brush. These bristles, uh, only you only want the paint to be on the bottom half towards the point. You don't want them to be anywhere near where the bristles meet the ferrule because that is going to mess you up. If paint dries there, then um, you're pretty much going to be looking for a new brush unless you get a fancy brush cleaner. Uh, Igor, uh, please focus the camera. Yes, master. I'm sorry it's been so long since I've handled the camera. Igor is my uh, live-in assistant and manservant, and he also films these videos. I'm a bit rusty, master. I know, aren't we all? So, besides the bindings, which almost look like belts, or straps, or I don't know, what have you. We're also going to be using Mornfang Brown on any belts or leather straps that we see on his torso. This also goes for pouches. Uh, we're not going to do the rope. That rope is going to be a different color, but... You might notice that your Bretonian bowmen have these little shields. And uh, I'm just going to take them as, or I'm going to assume that they are like, uh, not badges, but some identifying marker so that if they ever get lost, then they'll know who their buddies are. And you'll see the, the paint, it's uh, going on pretty thick. I'm trying to smooth it out as much as I can, but if it dries uh, a little bit thick, like this it's it's okay it's not the end of the world i primed this model all in black at a time when i thought black was the best model to prime your models or black was the best color next we're going to do rack art flesh on his shirt and at the time i said oh if it's a choice between white primer and black primer then at least if i'm starting from the darkest color black then i can build build up the colors uh, it was after this that I realized you can also prime, excuse me, in gray. It has been so long since I put paint to a model. I forgot how, I forgot how good this felt, guys. It's like my, my brain is uh, clearing its cache of junk thoughts and uh, negative negativity. It's really a great feeling. And I remember thinking before I was filming this video, like, oh, what am I gonna talk about? What am I gonna do while I'm painting? I'm just gonna be concentrating on not making a fool of myself. But really, when you uh, pick up a paintbrush after you haven't for a while, it's, it's really the best feeling in the world. Have you been, Igor? Uh, I can't complain, master. How's the gang? How's Lewis? Oh, you know Lewis. Same old, same old Lewis. And how's Commissar Bane? Oh, he's fine. see if I can 
see where all of those all of these fellows have gotten up to so they can start putting you back in these videos oh that would be a treat master I do enjoy the camera all right so you'll notice that with these older models especially his sleeve gives the impression of where the hole is and it should be hanging loosely so you could either just paint the entirety of the sleeve like this in Rackarth flesh or you could leave it unpainted for now and go in with Abaddon black or some kind of black color and fill it in I might end up doing that but for now I'm just gonna paint it in Rackarth flesh just to give myself an idea of where it is All right, it, it looks pretty thick, I'm not going to lie. With all the light shining on it, uh, the paint does look like it's going on pretty thick. So I'm going to try to thin each paint as I can when I'm putting them on. Next is McCrag Blue. I've got some palette paper here that I'm using, but um, yeah, it is going on pretty thick. So what is the McCrag blue for? So we're going to find those uh, areas. Oh man, look how thick that paint looks on camera. Like here on his chest, we're going to just block it out. We're going to go in halvesies. I was thinking of doing quarters, but I don't want to get too ambitious. This first video back. Okay, also we're going to take a look at this guy's, um, his hood. We want half of his hood to be blue and the other half red this is his way of showing that he fights for this uh, one particular army whose colors are red and blue so we're going to be doing his hood split but now the trick is we want that blue to come all the way down maybe to here the other half is going to be red. All right. What I might do between segments is go back and actually apply a second coat and then just let all this sit overnight to dry. This is Mephiston Red and it's going to be the other color that we're going to paint his hood. I think uh, one mistake that I made now that I'm looking at this miniature is that I probably could have gone and done the skin first, but that's okay. This model looks just like the one I'm using as a reference piece. beginning how to how to paint if you're six years old Bugman's glow it looks so thick this paint looks like it man look at that it's been so long since I painted it's completely gunked in there terrible Let's see if I can find some more Bugman's glow all right I guess that was my only jar of Bugman's glow so we're gonna just move ahead and paint Katie in flesh tone. If you have Bugman's Glow, then that is better. If you don't, like I do not at this moment, then Katie in flesh tone is, I guess it's okay to use as your first skin color. What it's going to do is make your starting point a little bit lighter and more pale. And it's actually not too bad for Bretonians. Imagine if these guys are uh, just really sickly and pasty, then that actually fits the aesthetic of the poor peasant bowman.
So what I might do is uh, paint a second layer of this as well. Just so we have full coverage and you don't see the, uh, the black undercoat popping out underneath. Cadian flesh tone. A lot of painting is uh, assembly line painting and working fast enough that you can jump on to the next paint color while the paint you just applied is drying. And then as long as you keep going down the line and uh, you could even work your way through an entire model of colors like I'm doing by the time you reach the end, then it's going to look really great. Okay, I found this great color I'm going to use Rhinox Hide. This is going to be for the shoes just to give it a little pop of color that's different and i know i said not to like just use the mornfang brown but i saw this in my uh, drawer while i was looking for that bugman's glow and i think it works pretty well to give you a little bit more of a darker brown color these bretonian peasants you're basically just looking to um do a bunch of drab colors with a pop of the color of the actual um, realm that they're fighting for. Steel Legion drab. So these beige, browns, sandy colors, this is what we're trying to do here. This Steel Legion drab is going to be for the rope that this poor bowman is using as a belt. Oh boy, it's, this paint is thin, have to shake it up more, I guess. It looks like his hood isn't really, isn't completely finished here. Let's add a little bit more red to the back side of it. There we go bit more red to this mm, badge here, this hanging trinket here for the one hanging off his collar. And the rest of them seems to be okay for now. All right, the last thing we have to paint on this first go pie of the colors is Zandri dust. We're looking for a nice yellow stone color. It's not going to match the other colors. It's a little bit more yellow than the Rackart flesh. It's not as dark as any of the other colors. As the bow color here, you'll see that this Zandri dust really helps to make it stand out from the rest of the model. It's lighter color as well as uh, him holding it away from himself kind of draws the eye to it. So you see it on the field, on the tabletop. Looks really nice. All right. So those are the colors I'm going to use. I'm going to take a minute now to go ahead and let all this dry. And uh, we're going to come back once it's completely dry. We'll do the shades and then we'll do the highlights. All right, welcome back everybody. We're gonna get started on the last part of the process, which is the Agrax Earthshade, Known Oil, and Raikland Flesh Shade. These washes are gonna really elevate your model, make it look like you spent a lot of extra time and care on them, and get you to battlefield ready status. So we're just gonna apply it to all of the brown areas should be the bow and uh, the bandages, arm bandages, wrappings, or whatever you want to call them. 
their tops. If you can, try to avoid getting this paint on the red and the blue of the hood. We're gonna hit that with known oil, actually. If you do, then it doesn't matter, but you can be better to only hit every other part of the model, which is the skirt, the legs, and you can see where some of these uh, some of these areas are starting to pool the shade. We don't want that, so we're just going to move it around. There we go. If the shade dries like in these recessed areas, then it's going to be a little bit more difficult to paint them out later. It's not like how the old shades used to be. And to avoid going into a rant of how things were better before, I do want to say that uh, if you're a new painter and you're so taken aback by how amazing your model suddenly looks, now that you've applied some washes, uh, I do want to warn you not to get too complacent. You want to look for any of these pooling areas and you want to swish that paint around, get them out of there, get it out of there, thin it down a little bit. If you need to, get some uh, napkins nearby or your drying towel, paper towel, and sop it up like this so it doesn't end up leaving a pool, in a, especially on, on like a flat surface like this area of the cloth. And then wipe it on your paper towel. All right, and this looks like it might be okay. Here, these little areas here are so tricky. You don't notice them, and you turn your back, and then it just gathers. And uh, that's not good. So this guy looks pretty good. Francois, the Bowman. Now we're going to go onto the skin, which is Raikland Flesh Shade. I'm going to let the reds and the blues have a little bit more time to dry. If even just another 30 seconds, just because we want them to be as dry as possible. Raikland Flesh Shade is a great wash color. Adds a little bit of rosiness, a little bit of redness to the uh, skin tones, a brown and a red. If you went with Seraphim Sepia, that would be a little bit too red for my taste, but Raikman Flesh Shade has just enough of a dark, darker brown undertone to it, which is perfect. And <clears throat> you don't want to worry too much. The shade is just there to coat that color of the model. All right, we're finally going to go on to Known Oil and hit the red and the blue areas. So I'm going to start with the little badges here. Just a quick swoosh, quick swoosh. And then I'm going to really just put, put most of the wash on the tip of your brush and just dab it onto a spot that has lots of creases and folds, like here around the neck. And let gravity take over and do the do the work for you. And there you go. To get a peasant bowman from like absolutely unpainted and just primed to this level right here, I should let it dry a little bit. Then uh, it shouldn't take you too long. If you assembly line your miniatures, you'll have your unit finished even faster. And uh, yeah, there he is, perfectly fine for the battlefield. If you want to get him a little bit more detail, some highlighting, clean up some of those colors, and do a little bit of freehand onto the badges, then stay tuned because we'll do a, um, a follow-up, like a part two to this tutorial where we're going to add those finishing steps. But thanks for watching, everybody. Very happy to be back. How are you feeling, Igor? Oh, tired. It's been a while. Could go for a nice cat sandwich right about now. So we're gonna go looking for some stray cats in the neighborhood. And uh, thanks for watching everybody. Head over to the Discord if you're not already a member and we'll see you in the next video. Laters!